Lord, oh. Father, we say thank you. We bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt your holy name. We give you the glory and the praise. You are the Adonai. You are the merciful God. You are the mighty God. We are saying thank you. It's by your mercy that we are here. It's by your mercy that we are alive. It's by your mercy that we have been kept by you. Father, we say thank you. Father, we love you and we appreciate you. Father, we thank you for your encounters, for open doors, for open heavens. We thank you for the victory. We thank you, Jesus, for transforming our lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen and amen. Let's say loud amen. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, we believe that God himself will encounter us afresh. In the name of Jesus. I want to encourage those that are watching or those that are here that you should invite people for the midweek service. And as you do, the Lord himself will bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, about two weeks ago, we looked at two forces, the blessing and the curse. And um, we did a deep dive into the blessing. We also looked at the curse. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 28. And um, you could just go watch it again if you want to. And also check out last week by our senior pastor, Pastor Tekobo, in Bodin Bearers. That's also a very powerful message. And today will be an offshoot of the blessing. So if you watch that one, if you were here, this would be an offshoot of the blessing. And I pray that the blessing of God will be manifested in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Samuel 9, 1 to 10. Second Samuel 9, 1 to 10. To 10. Maybe we can even finish the whole thing. It's a chapter. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And, his, and the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul? that I may show the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan, at yet a son which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machiah, the son of Amiel, in Lodiba. Lodiba was like the hood. Lodiba was not a good place. Let's keep going. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Micaiah, the, house, the son of Amiel, from Lodiba. And when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread in my table continually. That's a supernatural turnaround. <laughs> and he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? That's a very poor self-evaluation. A dead dog, as I am. Verse 9. Then, some, then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and their servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruit that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king had commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's son. Amen. Amen. We know the story. In this scripture, a man named Mephibosheth who was the grandson of King Saul. See the fall from grace. <laughs> a son of a king was living in the worst part of town, Lodiba. So, I mean, David said, is there anybody in the house of Saul that can show mercy to Is there anybody out there? And somebody said, 
there yet remains someone. I pray that when destiny helpers are looking for us, somebody will speak for us in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. When destiny helpers are looking for us, there will be somebody to answer in our favor in Jesus' name. You remember the story when Joseph had been in prison for some time and there was a dream that needed to be interpreted. And the king said, is there somebody that can interpret a dream? Somebody was there to what? Speak for Joseph and say, there's somebody in prison. If you bring him out, he can interpret your dream. I pray one more time that in our time of need, God will raise destiny helpers. And those destiny helpers will speak for us in a positive way. They will recommend us in Jesus' name. From this passage, I mean, come on now. This guy was crippled. Even in today's society, there's a way people look at, they call them disabled. I don't know what's the new term for them. There's a way disabled people are treated. I mean, it may not be in the U.S., but back home, I mean, they are pretty much left for themselves. They are left to fend for themselves. But from this scripture, you can see that after God encountered Mephibosheth, his life turned around for good. God will turn your life around for good in Jesus' name. In life, you need a supernatural turnaround. Scripture says it's not by power, nor by might, but what? By my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. If everything you get, you work for, there's a problem. In this life, if everything you get, you work and labor for, there's what? There's a problem. There is an aspect of God called favor, where God makes himself manifest to you easily. There's an aspect of God where God makes life easy for you. And I pray that we enter into that realm in Jesus' name. That's the realm of God, the realm of ease. The realm of ease. The realm where things work together for your good. So I decree and declare that we enter into a season where things begin to work together for our good. It's not by our labor, but by the mercy of God. The mercy of God will raise us out of the mighty clay and set us on the rock, and set us on that higher pedestal in Jesus' name. Say loud amen. amen. Let God hear your amen. Say loud amen. amen. That is what God can do. And I know my brethren at the back are recording, so thank you very much for recording. Introduction. When God created... Let's go to verse 10 quickly before we go to the introduction. Verse 10. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. First of all, the person that spoke for my people shit did not get the <laughs> did not get the blessing. This guy has is it 15 sons and 20 servants. He did not get the blessing, but someone that did not know that his life was about to be turned around. May we not be there when people are getting blessing and not be blessed in Jesus' name. Say loud amen. May we not be there when people are getting blessed and miss our turn in Jesus' name. Every appointment with blessing appointment with destiny. We will not miss it. We will not be absent when God is present to show up for our case in Jesus' name. This amen is not confused. Say loud amen. amen. Because there's a catch-up moment that God gives to everybody. And you must enter into your rest. You must enter into that place, into that thing that God has for you. And I pray that God himself will help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So the lameness and the handicap of Mephibosheth did not stop him. Don't look at your situation as a disadvantage. Every disadvantage with favor, God can make it an advantage. An accent with favor can be turned to what? And, hey, hey, with an advantage, an advantage. I was watching Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know him, former governor of California. I mean, his accent is thicker than a bowl of grits. <laughs> and from wherever he came from, he's very, very wealthy and very established. I know some things happened to him. I'm not looking at that one. <laughs> I'm not looking at the fact that, God forbid, if he dies today, we know somebody that came and passed through this world. Amen. So God is saying to you and me that what you think is a disadvantage to God is nothing. The Bible says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. There's nothing impossible with God. Introduction. When God created us, our topic is destiny help us. Tell your neighbor, destiny help us. 
You know, when you look at burden bearers, destiny helpers is part of what? A burden bearer. So, introduction. When God created us, he created us with a plan in mind. When God created you and me, he didn't just create you in an abyss. He made you for a plan and a purpose. Jeremiah 29, let me say, I know the plan or the thoughts I have towards you. Plan or thoughts of good, not of evil. Some say to give you a future and a hope. Some say to bring you to an expected end. God did not create you for nothing. There was a plan that God had in mind for you. And I pray that we will discover that plan in Jesus' name. The best prayer you can ever pray for your life is, God, what is your purpose for my life? And when you know, start what? Walking in it. That's the best prayer. Let me tell you, in your purpose, you get your money. In your purpose, you get your reward. In your purpose, you get your fulfillment. In your purpose, you get your, your accolades. It's in what? Your purpose. And when you submit to the purpose of God, you are on your way to enter into your destiny. May God's destiny and plan for our lives be fulfilled in Jesus' name. He had an assignment for us to fulfill and a purpose to manifest, to effectively carry out the plan that God has for us. And in moments where we cannot help ourselves, God sends destiny helpers. You cannot carry out your plan by yourself. That's, that's a fallacy. That's a lie. That's bunkum. <laughs> God is saying to you and me, for you to carry out the plan effectively, for you to enter into your rest, for you to get the help that you need, you need destiny helpers. You need what? Tell your neighbor, I need destiny helpers. Years ago, maybe 2016, 20, I don't even know, 2017, I was coming from South Atlanta, Fayetteville. I was coming back. I was leaving my parents back then. I went for a training, and I was driving, you know, this car and this motto. Somebody gave me their motto. <laughs> a motto, just Google it. Motto is a car that when you are going, you are believing God that you come back safely. And the kind of car that you speak in tongues when it doesn't start. So the guy gave me his car. I didn't have a car, so he gave me his, left, his, his leftover car that he just parked somewhere. And I realized that your car carries your spirit. Your car carries your what? If you are blessed, your car is blessed. When God blessed Abraham, he said everything around you is blessed. That's why Abraham could have 300 or something servants and go and destroy a nation. It's from driving that man's car, I realized that some cars are cost. Some cars are what? So I was driving the car. And I got somewhere, maybe is it 50 something on 285. I just said, go! First of all, I was hearing something. You know when you're hearing something, you're, you're ah, let's manage this car home. I had a loud bow. I said, oh God. And it was cold during the winter. It was cold. Hey, God, it was cold. So I managed to drive into an exit and park at a gas station. I checked the car. If there's jack, let me change the tire. And put in it. There was no jack. I said, what a stupid car is this one, God? No jack. I mean, what the f- I mean, I was just... <laughs> and it was late. It's so a late Saturday evening, late at night. Police came and drove by. I said, sir, can you help me? He said, no, he cannot help you. I mean, this is not an emergency. <laughs> He's not obligated to help. I don't suddenly I was looking. One country bumpkin with his truck full of crap and different things. I don't know if it was a builder. He just drove in with his cowboy boots. He looked at me, he said... You shall look like you're cold. I said, yes. <laughs> I said, please, do you have... He said, no, I have it. This guy, he said, you look very cold. He changed the tire for me. He changed the tire for me. And he had a gun. That's who made me nervous. Because you know those guys? <laughs> he had a pistol on the side. He changed... God can use anybody. That, in that moment, that was what? A destiny helper. I had the ability to change the tire. I did not have the instrument. You need destiny helpers. There is no boat that is beyond it. Even our father, father, Papa Adeboye, he has what? Destiny helpers. You and me, we need destiny helpers. Look at some of the pastors that are under him. Oh, when God blesses you, he helps your destiny with what? Destiny help us. 
Let's continue. Destiny helpers are sent along our path in times of great need. Many destiny helpers hardly know that they are destiny helpers. <laughs> what is destiny? You know, you have to break it down. We are destiny helper, destiny helper. Can somebody, de- can somebody define what is destiny? Anybody want to define what destiny is? Anybody want to define what destiny is? What is destiny? Bible study. What is destiny? Yes, sir. It's God's plan for your life. I like that. A destiny is God's plan for your life. Anybody else? What is destiny? Anybody else? All right. What is destiny? A future that someone or something will have. Your destiny is something that you will have. That means a future thing. It is something that you will experience in the future. It is something called faith or fortune. Your destiny has been decided by God. Your destiny has been decided by God. It pays to work in the plan that God has for you. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if God says you'll be a plumber and you're a doctor, so I go to plumbing, you'll be very wealthy. Society construct does not determine your wealth. There are poor lawyers, there are poor doctors, there are poor IT managers. (laughs) <laughs> but when you walk in the purpose of God for your life, I can assure you that God will begin to unfold your destiny before your eyes. Say it loud, amen. amen. That is what God can do. But you must walk in your purpose. There are some things that God has revealed to me about my own purpose. And God will reveal himself to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So your destiny is your faith. Is your fortune. And faith is F-A-T, not F-A-I-T-H. So who is a destiny helper? Who is a destiny helper? Someone define destiny helper. Don't look at the paper. That's my own. What is your own definition? Who is a destiny helper? Who? Yes, sir. Someone that can help you move forward in life. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Someone that can help you attain God's divine purpose for your life. Very true, sir. Thank you. Someone who is divinely connected to your destiny is a destiny helper. And it helps you to achieve your purpose. So if somebody's child is working with people that take drugs and smoke weed and are not serious with school, is that a destiny helper? That's a destiny destroyer. So if there's a destiny helper, they are destiny what? Destroyers. You will not encounter destiny destroyers. You will encounter destiny helpers. I pray that prayer for myself. Amen. Because this is your amen is not helping. If they are destiny helpers, they are destiny what? Destroyers. People that are in the business of destroying destiny. A man of God said, when I was in school, that they had a small revival. And God saved a lot of souls. There was this lady in the fellowship getting close to him. And he said he wasn't really, really a prayer person like that. He didn't pray that much. You know, I mean, compared to, I mean, we, all, we keep growing in faith. And he came to a point where maybe they were hanging out and the girl asked for a kiss and all that stuff. You get the point. And the girl said, hey, man, hey, you're not serious. <laughs> Stay in your lane, man. <laughs> Thank you. Somehow, he stopped the advances of the girl. And I think somehow God exposed he said somebody was be praying for him because he was not strong to resist that temptation. So the girl ran out of the room. She didn't even take her slippers or anything that she was wearing. She ran out of the room. He said there was a lecturer that was even coming to the fellowship to help. He stopped showing up. So they went to see him. And he came with his toe well. He's like, hey, what's going on, guys? What's up? What's up? You know, and he's like, hey, man, we've not seen you in a minute. And when he said, he looked beyond the lecturer inside the room and he saw who? That lady. Of course, he knew he was already gone. <laughs> there was another man they were following up with in the fellowship that was also very buoyant. They went to see him. When they got there, saw the guy in his boxers. <laughs> they looked inside the room again. Who did they see? Ah, who is that kind of girl? A destiny what? Destroyer. And there are men like that too. It's not only women. No. 
May we not collide with destiny destroyers in Jesus' name. Say loud amen. amen. May our children not collide with destiny destroyers. People that confuse them. You, you know, you're gay, you're not straight. You're, you're bi- no, 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 no. By the power of the Holy Ghost, because we walk with God, and he said he will deliver and I will save our children. All of our posterity will walk with God. They will not serve the devil. They will not be confused. They will not be among the children of Belial in the name of Jesus. So if they are destiny helpers, they are destiny destroyers. And you must have discernment to know who your destiny helpers are and who your destiny destroyers are. It can be a friend. It can be an acquaintance. I had the very best friend. One of my longest best friends. <laughs> almost 15 years. After a while, I have to disengage from him because I know that if I keep going with this guy, he will destroy my destiny. Very pain. Even to today, anytime I think about him, I'm pained. <laughs> I miss him. As a friend. You know, it's not, you know nowadays, <laughs> you have to clarify. <laughs> As a friend, I'm straight. <laughs> You know, we could talk about many things, sports, but the way he was going, if I have followed in that footsteps, I will not be here today. May God help us in Jesus' name. So a destiny helper is someone who is divinely connected to your destiny and helps you achieve your purpose. They take you from where you are to where you should be. You are not where you should be. A destiny helper takes you from where you are to where you should be. And I pray that God will help you collide with these people in Jesus' name. You are one destiny helper away from your fortune. You are one destiny helper away from opening your own house, your own business. You are one destiny helper away from being a multi-millionaire. You know they say, survey says that you are four people away from something. If I want to see Donald Trump, if I know somebody that knows him, I have known him. Amen. I'm going to give you an example. If I want to see Bill Gates, if I know somebody that knows him, you can say, sir, this is Victor. I also introduce him from Georgia. Hey, Victor, how are you? God can bring somebody your way that will take you to your next level. And God will do it for me in Jesus' name and my family. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for saying amen. Destiny helpers can help with your career, your family, ministry, and business. Oh, you need destiny helpers. You do. Let me tell you the truth. The best prayer you can pray for your children is for them to know God and for them to collide with destiny helpers. There are things, see, the training you give them, to an extent, God will help you. But there are some times that they have to collide with people out there that can even motivate them to do better. You can talk and talk and talk, and after a while, your voice just becomes like a sounding gong. (laughs) <laughs> but God can bring people on their path that will make them great. God will make us great. Amen. Say loud amen. amen. God will make us great. The career I'm in right now is by a destiny helper. The way I am, the way I work with God, there are destiny helpers that God has put on my path to help me achieve my goal. And God will do the same, even more for you in Jesus' name. We have angelic destiny helpers. We have human destiny helpers. And we also have the Holy Spirit as our destiny helper. Pharaoh's daughter was a destiny helper used by God to save Moses at birth. Exodus 2, 1 to 10. If you look at, let's just put our eyes on it quickly. Exodus chapter 2, from verse 1 to 10. You know, somebody said, I heard that um, Moses, everything he was, with him was connected to water. He was born inside water. <laughs> it's water that killed him. <laughs> Everything's what? So put that name that Judah Moses now. What should they do? <laughs> May we not have the negative effect of everybody's name in Jesus' name. Your name is your identity. You know that. Let's keep going. Exodus chapter 2, 1 to 10. Quickly. Exodus 2. 1 to 10. I'll just read maybe a few verses here. Let's look at verse 5. Verse 5. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along the river, riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, 
She sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him. That's favor. In that time, the law is that if you see a Hebrew kid, kill. But when she saw the baby, favor came on Moses. And she had what? Compassion also means favor on him. And said, this is one of what? The Hebrew children. And said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women that, they she, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. So, <laughs> Moses' mom was getting paid for taking care of her child. You need destiny helpers. The man that brought Papa Adeboye to Christ was a destiny helper. Let me tell you, any soul that Papa Adeboye wins, that man will get credit for it. You know something called multi-level marketing? Have you heard it before? Where if I bring someone to a business and they sell something, I will get interest on what, what that person has sold. When God saw Papa, I'm just using that you as an example, and knew that this man can be more than a lecturer, more than an academician, he brought someone and said, talk to this boy about Jesus. And God has brought him thus far. And he can look back after 82 years and say, God has helped me. God has, has buttered my bread. God has made me great. By destiny helpers. Look at um, um, angels. When Daniel fasted for 21 days, an angel came to deliver a message to Daniel. But the prince of Persia, that's the prince of Iran. So every country has their demonic princes. Every city, every territory has their demonic principality. There was a demonic prince that stood in the way. And God sent in Michael to do the work. Daniel 10, 13, let's look at it. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. Daniel chapter 10. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, Persia is Iran, withstood me one and 20 days, 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, oh, may God bring a bigger bulldozer to destroy your enemies. The enemy think he's strong, but God is stronger. He's the strongest God. He's the biggest God. He's the all-wise God. He said, Michael, and Michael is the chief archangel. He said, what? One of the chief princes came to help me. And I remain there with the kings of Persia. <laughs> God will send help to you. Say, God will send help to me. Say with conviction, God will send help to me. You need the help of God. One thing about destiny help is that God uses men for men. If God said you'd be rich, will he drop dollars from heaven? No. He uses men for men. Luke 2, 52. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Jesus increased or grew in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man. When Jesus was born, he needed destiny helpers. The Holy Spirit was his destiny helper. He told Joseph, stand up and go to Egypt. Aaron is going to kill all his children. That was his destiny helper in that moment. May God help us in Jesus' name. The ravens came to feed Elijah. 1 Kings 17, 2 to 6. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2 to 6. That's, you know, we are doing Bible study. 1 Kings 17, 2 to 6. The ravens came to feed Elijah. Ravens eat meat. Ravens, see, you can't give somebody their delicacy and ask them to give somebody else. They will eat it. But because of God's hand on Elijah, God blessed him. The widow of Zarephath. He said, I have commanded a widow woman to feed you. That was a destiny helper. Now I want to ask you, do you know any examples of destiny helpers in the Bible? Anybody want to give me an example of destiny helpers? Since you are doing Bible study, anybody? Go ahead, sister. This other. Um, Mordecai. Um, oh, love it. He helped Esther, but also helped King Xerxes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That was a good one. Mordecai, that was a very good one. It was the destiny helper of Esther or Adaza. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 
Joseph of Arimathea that helped Jesus in the cross, helped him carry his cross? Yes, sir. Abraham sent uh, Eleazar, his servant, mm -hmm. to get a wife for his, his uh, son. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The rest is history. Definitely. That was a destiny helper. Jonathan, 1 Samuel 22, was the destiny helper of David. Jonathan was the destiny helper of David. Abigail was a destiny helper of David. David had many destiny helpers. See, for every season of your life, you need a destiny helper. For every season, when you are small, when you become a young adult, when you become an adult, for every season, every moment of your life, you need a destiny helper. From now on, I decree and declare you will not be stuck again. Every foul spirit of stagnancy deceased from your life in Jesus' name. There is something about not having help. That guy that was blind by the pool, he said, I don't have anybody to throw me inside the pool when the angels come to stir the waters up. Every one of us need destiny helpers for every season of our lives. Amen. Before I got married, working with God, and of course, you know, when you're working with God, you can't do things that people are doing. <laughs> because you can come on the other and you have to come and preach. And you have to do this. <laughs> so I came to a point, I was just tired. I said, sir, I'm leaving my house. I'm just there by myself. Nothing, whatever, man, get out. Nothing. So I went on a date. And, you know, just leave it. I was just ready to just risk everything. I'm done. And on that date, my mentor called me. He said, Shion, how are you? First of all, I tried to even... Why are you spacing? <laughs> you are spoiling my, my advances. You are, you are disturbing the, the motion. <laughs> he called again. I had to pick. He said, Shion, where are you? Oh, Victor, where are you? I said, sir, let me not lie to you more. <laughs> me, I don't tire. You don't do now. Wait to be all this one. Sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm supposed to speak in regular. I'm very tired. I, I don't know what to do. Sorry, I, sometimes I switch back to my native tongue. Forgive me. <laughs> and he said something that I'll never forget. He said, look at the book of 1 Corinthians, is it chapter 5, verse 1? He said, Reuben. Because he slept with his father's wife or father's concubine, he said that he missed that blessing. Every firstborn gets double. Everybody know that. In Israel, the firstborn gets what? Who got the double? Who? Let me ask, who got the double? Who? Who? Nobody knows. It's Joseph. There is no tribe of Joseph. It's Manasseh and what? Ephraim. It came to a point that Reuben was so cursed that Moses said, Father, let Reuben live and not die. Thank you. Now the son of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. But for as much as he defiled his father's bed, his birthright was what? Given unto the sons of who? The lastborn pretty much or so became the firstborn. The son of Israel and the genealogy is not to be reckoned after what? The birthright. He said to you, he said Premarital sex affects women more than men, men more than women. Sorry. I said, eh. Sir, anything he was saying, actually, it was helping my destiny. <laughs> I was ready to what? I mean, I was done. That's why I said that your children, God must send who to them? Destiny helpers, not destiny destroyers. Let me give you an example of a destiny destroyer. There was a man in the Bible that loved his half-sister, Tama. He loved that girl, which was very weird, very stupid, very, very crass. I don't know anybody that does that, I mean, to that extent. And he had a cousin that said, you know what, since you love this girl, act like you are sick. A normal friend will say what? You did, Chris. Are you okay? Sorry. Are you all right? This is crazy. You better stop this thing and go for deliverance. Go and see Samuel. <laughs> Let Samuel, the priest, lay hands on you. Of course, that friend led him down the ditch and he was killed. All of my friends that I told you that I kind of kept my distance from him. We were playing basketball at the, at the park, somewhere in Snellville here. We were just playing around. He's like, hey, Vic, man, I'm talking to this woman and she's married. 
And, um, you know, her husband has not been treating her well, but I feel like I'll treat her well. I say, bro, you trying to get shot? <laughs> because even Solomon said that the soul of a man will hunt after someone that sleeps with his wife. Go and check it out. The soul of what? Of the husband. We hunt after anybody that what? Ah. He said, well, I know you tell me the truth. I said, please, anything you do with a married woman, as a single guy, get her from there. May God help us in Jesus' name. Say loud, amen. amen. Of course, Jethro, Exodus 18, 14 to 26. Jethro, Exodus 18, from verse 14 to 26, was a destiny helper to Moses. Now, let's look at the types of destiny helpers. Anytime you are praying for destiny helpers, be specific. If you say, God, give me a house, what kind of house do you want? Bungalow? No, no, people will say, God, give me a car. Do you want a Pinto? Do you want a um, Volkswagen Beetle? People don't know how to ask. I think that's the problem that we, we have come to a point where sometimes people are in lack. And when they get an opportunity with a blank check, they ask for rubbish. God help me, <laughs> forgive me for using that blunt word. When you are asking God for something, be what? Specific. Four types of destiny helpers. Number one, divine connectors. Say divine connectors. Second Kings 5. Neymar was a big general. And he had leprosy. But there was a slave in that house that connected him to Elisha. A divine connector may not have the power to help you, but they can connect you to someone that can do it. A connector, someone that can connect you to what and who you need for your destiny. And you need the spirit of the servant to know who these people are. You can go to a company and people want to see the CEO. But the secretary knows the schedule of the CEO. Amen. So people overlook the secretary, secretary and they focus on who? The CEO. But if they really want to know how to get to the CEO, who, will they, who should you ask? The secretary or the PA? May God help us in Jesus' name. Divine connectors. Number two, you need men of influence. Who do you need? Say loudly, who do you need? These are men of influence and gatekeepers of industries. These are credible people that can speak for you. You need a job. Each of interview for the job. Someone will say, hey, sir, give him the job. And let me tell you, it works everywhere, even in the U.S. You know, in IT, when a manager comes in, let's say the guy is a CISO, a deputy CISO, he moves to a different company. Do you know what he does? He brings like maybe four of his most trusted people, maybe somebody in database management, somebody in firewall. The interview is ceremonial. They already what? They already have the job. Oh, we're doing interview. It's what? Ceremonial. He has brought his... I know somebody that left our company, went to another company, came back. <laughs> oh, God have mercy. You need people that can say, hire him. Give him that contract. Give her that money. Those are what? Men of influence. Men of influence. See, your prayer point with a stroke of the pen, your answer is on it. By those what? Destiny helpers. May God send destiny helpers your way in Jesus' name. Say loud amen. amen. There was one time I was praying to God for a job. And somehow somebody just called me. He said, hey, this company needs to hire immediately. I was in Nigeria. <laughs> this person needs to, like, the way they were saying it, this person needs, are you right? Are you available tomorrow? Ah, hey, sure, sure, sure. I did an interview. They say, you, ah, you did well in the interview. You have a second interview. Sir, in less than a week, because of the urgency of what? Their need. God used somebody to give me. Me, I've been praying for, I've gone to, the, I've gone on the altar. Hey, God. <laughs> Bless me with a job. You just need someone, a somebody, a man of what? Of influence. It was a contract job. One of the best jobs I ever had in my life was from that. 
May God help us in Jesus' name. Say loud amen. amen. Say louder amen. amen. Life is enjoyable when you have men of influence in your pocket. And the thing is that the people of this world understand it. You see a multi-millionaire going for a billionaire's one-year-old birthday. What is your business with a one-year-old birthday? You know that with that, I can get something from this man when he sees me around. Please be smarter than the people of the world. May God help us in Jesus' name. You know, in Nigeria, when they are trying to choose a president, I realize that Dangote, they'll be looking. I don't know if you have, <laughs> you have seen it before. Like between, let's say, forgive me, for those that know connect to Nigeria, just forgive me. Let's say between Buari and Good Luck Jonathan. You know that there are tentacles on, on both places. Oh, good luck. Okay, he's bright. Ah, ah, Buari, how are you? How are you doing? Dangote, you know, we have some refineries that we're trying to open. <laughs> These people understand the power of what? Influence. You must understand it too. May God help us in Jesus' name. When God blesses you, he sends you men of influence. I'm giving you all these examples so that God will help you. And may God help you in Jesus' name. I've given this example before. Let me give it again. I was praying one time. And God told me clearly. He said, this prayer you are praying, go and see that it's you. This one, your power cannot carry it. <laughs> go and see. But if somebody tells you, go and see that, how will you see that it's you? I'm asking, how? I said, God, what will I do? So I came home. I told my wife. I said, honey, this prayer we are praying about, this prayer point, we need to see that it's you. God got me a man of influence that was what? Close to Daddy Jew. I just text him. I said, please, on WhatsApp. I said, please, I want to see Daddy Jew. He said, come on Friday. When I got there, the, PA, the secretary said, sir, the list is closed. <laughs> you know how they are. There's nothing again. We are, from two months ago, the list. When I told him, he just laughed. He said, follow me. Me and my wife, straight to his office. We knelt down. And he explained our situation to him. Normally, you know, when you see that it's you, <laughs> forgive me. You don't say what? God bless you and be, just go away. He said, Daddy, these people, they need this, they need this. This person is from Atlanta. This one, that one, that one. He said, hey. He said, my father and my God. That one is between me and my wife and the people that were in the room. The prayer point. But God used who? A man of what? Of influence. You need it. If you decide to write to Baba Deboye, it will take you months. But a man of influence can carry you directly to the throne of the king. So who do you need? Men of who? Number three, you need gifted people. You do. You need who? First Samuel 16, 17 to 21. David was skillful. And because, let's look at it. And Saul said unto his servant, provide me now a man that can play well. Bring him to me. Verse 18. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehem height, that is cunning in what? Some say he's skillful in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a, even though he's a handsome person, and a comely what? Person. And the Lord is with him. May God, again, as I pray this prayer, raise men to respond for us in front of destiny helpers in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't know the name of the man that did it. We, don't have, we have no idea, but he recommended who? David. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, send me David, thy son, which is with thee, with the sheep. Verse 20. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Saul. 21. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly. And he became who? He became his PA. A man that was taking care of animals in the... A farmer became one of the closest aides de camp to the king. You need gifted people around you. The destiny that God has for you... Okay, let's say God give an idea for an app. Okay, create this app. Who do you need to create the app for you, please? Someone that understands the intricacies of what? For iOS and for Android. Knows the back end of it. Putting it behind the firewall. All these things. If you don't know it, who do you need? 
a gifted person that can do it for you. You want to start a business. Do you know how to write a business plan? God will send me gifted people in Jesus' name. <laughs> Pray for your prayer for yourself. We are praying for ourselves now. God will send us what? Gifted. Every church needs gifted people. I went to a church this past Saturday. The guy that was in charge of their technical department, I had to give that guy kudos. The guy ran back and forth. I mean, the guy was... 21-year-old guy, very, very sound. And I want people to be sound too here too in Jesus' name. Gifted people. You need them in your life. And number four, finally, you need burden bearers. You need burden bearers. Burden bearers love you for your success. Or what... They, they, do, they love you not for your success, excuse me, or what you are, but for who you are. They love you for what? Who you are. They remain loyal in hard times and are committed in ensuring your comfort. You need burden bearers. You need people that can carry your matter on their head. You need people that can check on you and say, how are you doing? Hmm. Not because I want something from you, but because I care about you. Apostle Simon said that he gets like maybe 700 texts, or he responds about 700 texts a day, at least in that time period. And of course, everything is what? Papa, pray for me. <laughs> I need breakthrough. He said people forget that him too is also what? He's also a man. He said maybe out of the 700, maybe two will say, sir, how are you? How are you doing, sir? The Lord strengthen you in Jesus' name. He said he prays for them, especially. May God help us in Jesus' name. When people come to you just because they need something, you don't have loyal people. People that care about you beyond what you have to offer. You need burden bearers. Ruth and Naomi. Ruth said, your God will be my God. Your people shall be my people. Look at the vagabond men that came to see David and said, David, you are our king. May God send us burden bearers in Jesus' name. A burden bearer will hold your hand until they see the promises of God fulfilled over your life. A woman is believing God for a child. A burden bearer says, sir, I'm going to be praying with you and for you until that child comes. You need papers. He says, sir, I know a lawyer that will do it at a discount rate and do a good job. May God help us in Jesus' name. Oh, may God send you and me burden bearers. Say it loud, amen. amen. May God send you and me burden bearers. Amen. You need a car. Say, sir, come and take one of my cars here. I give it to you for now. If you want to return it, return it. But this car is for you. Oh, God. Say, my father. Send me destiny helpers. Send me burden bearers. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 46 verse 1, we round off here. Psalms 46 verse 1. Psalms 46 verse 1. Psalms 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Your main destiny helper is God. God is your main destiny helper. For those that are believing God for marriage, believing God for restoration, God will send you body bearers. God will send you men of influence. God will send divine connectors to you. Say loud, amen. amen. For those that are stuck on one level, God will bring someone that will pull you out of that level. Amen. Say loud, amen. amen. For those that are believing God for breakthrough, God will send somebody that will bring you out of that and give you the breakthrough in Jesus' name. For those that are believing God for higher realms of glory, for higher heights, for God to take them to the place of their destiny, God will do it for them in Jesus' name. And we are going to round off with Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. You see there that Esther got help, not only for Mordecai, but the king of the eunuchs, the, the, the head of the eunuch, was also a destiny helper for Esther. Esther chapter 2, please. Let me open it to you right quick. 
and will rise, rise up to pray. Esther chapter 2. Look at it, verse 9. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness from him. Esther 2, verse 9. Kindness from him. And he speedily gave her her things. For purification, we strut things as belong to her. And seven maidens, <laughs> which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had favor with the person in charge of the utilities and the amenities of the place. He gave Esther seven servants. May God bless you in Jesus' name. A man of God said he was in the airport. See, this morning you are working for, it can come to you very easily. He says, I was working in the airport in Nigeria. Somebody stopped me and said, Sir, his name is Pastor Paul NHA. He said, The man stopped and said, Sir, this is $35,000 for you. That is somebody's salary for three months or even a year. <laughs> Things that people struggle for, it will come to me and you easily. That is what a destiny helper can do. He said he was in a place. He said, sir, I have a house in Chicago. Same pastor. He said, today he has not seen the house. A man of God I had said that, he said every week he gets at least seven properties. Oh, God. Every week. He said he has about 200 properties. Two. two. Is it 200 or so? If I remember clearly. Please, forgive me. Every week he has, he gets what? About six to seven. And many people, they will labor and labor for one land. <laughs> God will send you and me destiny of us. Let's rise to our feet. And say, my father, my father. This life is hard, oh. But with what you will do for me, let, let your mercy connect me with men of influence. Pray. Let your mercy connect me with gifted people. Let your mercy connect me with body bearers. Let's pray that prayer in the next 30 seconds. My father, my father. For my destiny to receive color, I need destiny helpers. Oh God, send me gifted people. Send divine connectors to me. Send me body bearers. Pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Pray. We have one minute to pray that prayer. 30 seconds. Shaka panda la kosande. Le fraka pashanda da da da. My father, my father, in this month of April, I am not stuck. I decree and declare that you send me body bearers. That you will make me a body bearer myself. You send me gifted people. You send me men and women of influence. You will send me divine connectors. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I heard this message years ago, and this man preached message in 2008, Bishop Edipo. He said, a man came to him and said, sir, you have been a blessing to me, and I'm not giving you any money. He said, from now on, sir, I'll be giving you money for lunch. He said, sir, how about $5,000? For what? How much lunch can you give $5,000, please? That is almost 15 years ago. <laughs> See, that realm is possible. You just have to imagine that you can get there. A realm where you don't labor for money, but money comes to you. A realm where you are not laboring for cars, you are not sweating every day, but it comes to you easily. Say, my father, my father, I enter into the realm of rest. I don't chase things, things chase me. Pray. From now on, those things I'm believing you for will begin to chase me. I will not labor in vain. Pray with all your heart. You have one more minute. Father, in the name of Jesus, I will not labor in vain. That dream that you have given me, that hospital, that clinic I'm supposed to start, oh my father, my father, that business you have given me, that idea, you will send me people, you will send me people, that church, that thing you have, you have made me for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you have not given your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, raise your hand. If you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you want to give your, your life to him again and say, Father, have mercy on me. Anybody, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Amen and amen. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you for your children. We thank you because this word has come to make us great. The word was sent and it has lighted upon us. And we see the result of it in our lives. Father, we are not just here as alone, but we manifest the word that has been spoken tonight. So we decree and declare Every part of us receive destiny helpers. From now on, we receive burden bearers. 
from now on, we receive gifted people. From now on, our destiny receives men of influence. From now on, we receive divine connectors. Everything that has brought reproach to us, Father, turn into a testimony. Say, my Father, my Father, every reproach, every shame that the enemy is trying to put on me, Father, turn it to blessing. Pray it in the next 30 seconds. Every reproach, every shame, anything the enemy is using against me, let your fire consume it. Pray with authority because you have authority. Whoever is serpent, whoever is scorpion. Everything the enemy is putting on me, every demonic rubbish, every foul spirit, every agent of darkness, every demonic reproach, get out in Jesus' name. You have no right to remain in my life. I decree and declare that it is well with me. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want to apologize for going over time. I think I just got excited. Please forgive me. And I pray that God will also forgive you too in Jesus' name. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, please give your offering. And you know that's how you cement your blessing is by giving. As you give, the Lord will bless you mightily in Jesus' name. We meet again on Friday, 8 p.m. on Zoom. And on Sunday, we meet by 9.30 for our workers' meeting, 10 o'clock for our Sunday school. And as you come, you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. This week, you will enjoy Destiny Helpers. Say a loud amen. This week, that thing that has been a reproach turned to testimony in Jesus' name. I can't wait to celebrate with you. You will celebrate this month. You will rejoice this month in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare it is well with all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Say loud, amen.